like the circumstances of your life are entangling you, weighing you down, sapping your strength, and choking the life out of you. King David also felt this way and cried out to the Lord in Psalm 18. I called the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. And today, we're going to explore God's promises in the midst of pain. And while we should pray for God to deliver us from whatever entangles us, I love how David's prayer describes how God strengthens us in the midst of our challenges. It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. Lord, we ask you to give us strength that is not of our own making when we feel weak. Stability that is not of our own making when we feel like we're going to stumble or fall. And protection that is not of our own making when we feel vulnerable. Amen. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday worship live stream. My name is Patrick Wicker, and my wife Jody and I, Pastor Bogner Vineyard. Uh, Nick is going to lead us in worship this morning, and then after we talk about meeting together again on the 1st of November, which is so exciting, we're going to hear from Andrew McNeil from Birmingham Vineyard, who is going to talk about God's promises in the midst of pain. So let's worship the Lord together this morning. Let's um Let's sing a be still for the presence of the Lord. We need to take our time to settle into how God's spirit falls upon us has been following and filling our families, our friends and our lives for a very long time and watching us forever. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Minister 
His grace No work too hard for Him In faith receive from Him Be still for the power of the Lord Is moving in this place Be still for the presence of the Lord The Holy One is here reverence and fear in him no sin is found we stand on holy ground be still for the presence of the Lord the Holy One is here and in him no sin Stand on holy ground Be still for the presence of the Lord The Holy One is here Amen Uh, I'd like to bring a Chris Tomlin song. I'm sure most of you know it, actually. It's been around quite a long time. It's called How Can I Keep From Singing. And there is an endless song Echoes in my soul I hear the music Ring. And though the storms may come, I am holding on to the rock I cling. How can I keep from singing your praise? And how can I ever say enough How amazing is your love How can I keep from shouting your name I know I am loved by the King And it makes my heart want to sing I will lift my eyes to the darkest night For I know my Saviour lives And I will walk with you Knowing you'll see me through And sing the songs you can I keep from singing your praise? And how can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? And how can I keep from shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King and it makes my heart wants to sing I can sing in the troubled times and sing when I win I can sing when I lose my step 
and fall down again I can sing cause you pick me up Sing cause you're there I can sing cause you hear me Lord When I call to you in prayer I can sing in my last breath And sing for I know that I'll sing with the angels and the saints around the throne. So how can I keep from singing your praise? And how can I ever sing enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King And it makes my heart I am loved by the King And it makes my heart Yes, I'm loved by the King And it makes my heart want to sing Amen Good morning uh, Let's uh, sing Build My Life together Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around verse one again. Worthy of every song we could ever sing You're Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you and Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you And holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me I will build I will build my life 
upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken and I will build my trust upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me Amen. Thank you, Nick, for leading us in worship this morning. As many of you have heard, we will begin meeting together in person on Sunday, the 1st of November at 10.30 a.m. Uh, at Bursted uh, Park Community Center. So for at least the remainder of 2020, this seems to be the best venue that will help us have a safe and enjoyable time together. So look forward to seeing all of your faces and worshiping with you again. Now, on the 1st of November at 10.30 a.m., we are going to be celebrating God's faithfulness to us during the lockdown. And we want to hear stories from you. So please contact me if you have a story that you would like to share. We will also be celebrating communion. It is going to be such a wonderful time. Please do not miss it. We'd love to see you there again. Now, at Bogner Vineyard, you do not have to pretend that you're okay if you're not okay. And at 6.30 p.m. on the next Sunday, the 8th of November... This special evening meeting is going to be a safe place where it's okay for you not to be okay. We recognize that the past seven months have been very difficult for so very many of you, and we pray that you would encounter God's love for you in your struggles. We're also going to observe Remembrance Sunday, and earlier that Sunday on the 8th at 3 p.m., we're going to prayer walk with other churches in Bogner ending our walk at the monuments at Bogner Town Hall. So this is more of an adult appropriate meeting, which will take place uh, in replacement of the morning meeting, which is usually going to be 10.30 uh, in the morning ongoing. A few other expectations about meeting together from the 1st of November, just so we can keep it safe and enjoyable. Of course, social distancing will need to be maintained. Please use the one-way systems that we'll have throughout the building. Now, in the wine press this coming week, there will be a link to a church suite form so you can register yourself, your family, or any group of up to six individuals that you'd like to sit with. This will help us prepare for the correct numbers and gather track and trace information. And when registration opens, you can also call or email the church office to reserve your place. We'll have mixed seating throughout uh, the building, including many tables for families with kids. We'll provide crafts and some fun things for your kids to do, uh, but there will be no kids church. And with this system, you would only have to self-isolate if someone in your group gets COVID. You will need to wear a face mask once you enter the building, of course, use hand sanitizer, bring your own coffees, teas, and snacks. Um, but the one thing we want you to know, we want you to look forward to worshiping with us, but please also do so with your hearts, but not with your voices at this point. 
If you have any questions about this, you are welcome to reach out to Paula this coming week. And last but not least, uh, in two weeks' time, there will also be two kids' light parties. The Vineyard UK We Shine light party is on Saturday, the 31st of October at 6.30 p.m. And the Bogner Vineyard light party is on Sunday, the 1st of November at 1.30 p.m. More information is in the wine press. And you're welcome to contact Becky if you have any questions about that. I would now like to introduce Andrew McNeil from Birmingham Vineyard, who will teach about God's presence with us in pain. Well, hi there, Vineyard family. It's great to be with you today. Thank you for this opportunity to join you at your Sunday gathering. I'm privileged to be able to share a message from God's Word. So if you've got your Bibles, can you turn to Jeremiah chapter 29? I'm going to be looking at a very familiar passage in Jeremiah. And I want to look at the subject of God's promise in the midst of our pain. The passage that we're looking at goes like this, and you might recognize it if you've been around church for a while. It says this, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. A familiar passage, and I want to take some time to look at the context. Really, this context is the context of pain and trial. Now, if you've lived a completely pain-free life, I'm really delighted for you. But if, like the rest of us, you've ever experienced disappointment, loss, uncertainty, disruption, economic, relational, whatever it might be, then, then you know we're talking to each other here as friends. This promise comes in the midst of trial for God's people. We've actually experienced ourselves so much trial in this last few months, haven't we? There's been disruption. And disruption and, and trials can be tipping points to learn to trust. So what's the story? What's the promise? And what was the difference? That's how we're going to take our time together today, to look at the story, the promise, and what was different. And think about our story, the promise of God to us, and what can be different as we say yes to him. What's the story here in Jeremiah? Well, the story is a bit of context for you that God's people in the Old Testament had been living in Jerusalem. That was their home. That's the place they knew and where they worshipped God. But for a whole bunch of reasons, Jerusalem now is in a very perilous place. And King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the Babylonian Empire, comes and Jerusalem is in ruins. Jerusalem is overrun by his troops. And then thousands of the Jews are taken 800 miles away and plonked in Babylon, the very epicenter of the Babylonian Empire. And they're in that context, and that's where they find themselves in this time of trial and pain and trauma, far from home, dislocated, and in the very presence of those who've oppressed them. And actually, Jeremiah says, this is gonna be with you for 70 years. This is not just a couple of months. This is gonna be reality for a long time. So they have disruption trauma, loss, and pain. And in that context, this promise from God lands. Do you know, we've experienced disruption. I'm not saying we're in exile, but we've experienced for all of us in this nation and around the globe, disruption. We've had disruption to our normal routines, the normal ways of connecting as family and church and worshiping together, economic uncertainties and relational pressures. The list goes on. Let me ask you a question. What's your response in the midst of pain and disruption and trial and turmoil? We see their response in a psalm. If you've got your Bibles in Psalm 137, that actually speaks to this point in the story of God's people. And Psalm 137 describes really vividly their response in the midst of trials and pain. They say this, that we were in Babylon and we sat down by the rivers of Babylon and we wept when we remembered Zion. And then our enemy came and said, sing some of those songs for us, those cute little songs you sang back there. And they said, how can we sing the song of God in a foreign land? We literally hung up our harps and we fell silent. It was inconceivable to think, how can we sing the song of God in a foreign land? How can we engage in worship in the midst of this pain and trial? That's where they started, but they didn't get stuck there. We see the story unfold. So that's the story. What's the promise? What's God's promise to us as we're aware of our story? Well, before we get to that familiar promise that we started our talk with, I want to look at the context. We see 
in verse 5. It says this in chapter 29, verse 5. Build houses, settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Increase in number there, do not decrease. So God's saying, hey, listen to these people. Embrace the situation. Don't fight it. Get used to this new reality. It's not changing fast. Get used to this new world. Wow, what a word to hear. It's instinctive for us. If you're anything like me, in the midst of pain, in the midst of trauma, in trials, we want to go, change, please. We want to see a massive change in our circumstances and things go back to normal quickly. It's instinctive to want to do that in trials and in testing times because we think that the change is the answer. But in this story, God is saying, listen, change externally is not going to be the solution. I want you to encounter me in this place. Fake news is nothing new, friends. There was fake news going around in this story. In fact, there were false prophets. Verse 8 says this. This is what the Lord Almighty of God of Israel says. Don't let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. False prophets peddling false hope. Any hope that's based on external circumstances fundamentally changing is very, very fragile. Some things that we experience in life that come our way are just way outside of our control. And to pin our hopes on external change is just too vulnerable. Hope that's enduring, hope that's substantial is based on the goodness and the character of God. That, friends, is solid ground. And the word of the Lord was, you're to embrace this moment and I will embrace you in this moment. Second thing we see before we get to the promise is that they were in a place of self-pity. Someone described self-pity as self in a pit with a why. Why me? Why now? Why God? God says, I want you to look up and look out. In this place, don't get stuck in self-pity. Look up and look out. He says this in verse 7 of this chapter, a famous verse, and it's God speaking to his people in the midst of their pain. I want you to seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. My goodness, that's the word that God brings to them. He's saying, listen, don't get self-absorbed. Look up to me and pray and look out for those around you. Even in trials, we're blessed to be a blessing. And one of the things that God says to his people here is don't just go into a pity party. I want you to be in that place. And my plans to prosper you are linked to the plans of God for the people around you. He says, move from a pity party to pray. I've got plans for you, but I've also got plans for the place that I've put you in. And that, as we get that context, here's the shocker. Here's the big promise that comes that we're familiar with. But to get the context makes it more rich. For I know the plans I've got for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Then you'll call on me and you'll pray to me and I will listen to you. You'll seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I'll be found by you. God's promises come in the midst of pain. He doesn't say just endure this 70 years, then it'll get good when it's all over. No, there's a promise to be experienced and, and worked into your heart here and now, as well as being fulfilled in the future. The promises are more powerful when we understand the pain. The, the comfort is more profound when we get the context of what they're going through. For us, we do experience trial times. We experience testing times, challenges, setbacks, disruption. And the promises of God can become even more precious to us in the backdrop of those trials. For Rosie and I, we've had a, uh, all the pressures of lockdown and all that that's brought for all of us. And we've had some additional things this last few months that have been really challenging. We've had the sadness of my father passing away and burying him a few weeks ago and then just in the last couple of weeks, Rosie's father passed away. Two huge losses in the space of six weeks. Not easy spaces to walk through, but in those times of loss and sadness and trial and grief, the promises of God become more precious as the bedrock from which to do life and the things that sustain us. Not a circumstantial change, but a reliance on the goodness and character of God. Some of the things that have enriched us in the scriptures have been this passage in Jeremiah, promises in the midst of pain, but other things, even in darkness, light will dawn for the upright. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. They walk through the valley of tears and they make it a place of springs. The wicked are crushed by every calamity, but the lovers of God find strong hope even in the time of death. 
just some of the promises that enriched us. Do you know, we don't let circumstances set the agenda, friends. God and his promises set the agenda over our lives. Let that be a word that lands in your heart today. Maybe you're having real trials. And God's word is that I know, I see, and I care. There's an invitation to encounter God in the midst of pain, in the midst of trial. And the word of the Lord is that even in that place, he can be present and he can prosper our soul with his comfort, with his presence and with his goodness. That's the word of God to us. What happens for these people when they take God at his word? As they trust God in their trial, what was different? We've looked at the story, we've looked at the promise, and now what was different? Well, what was different? What can be different as we say yes in the midst of our pain? History would show us that this 70 year period for the Jewish people was really formative. I wanna look at three things. They became rooted, they became resilient, and they became replicable. Rooted, first of all, they moved from observation to ownership. Their story of connecting with God was very centered on one place at one time, gathering with hundreds of people in Jerusalem. And that was the way they encountered God, but they couldn't do that. They were not in the place where they could sing the song of God. They were in their own homes and it was very different. They had to learn new ways of connecting with God for themselves. They went from this observation to this ownership. They had to own their own journey and their own connection with him. They had to pick up their harps again, metaphorically, and actually learn to worship in the midst of their trial. They had to establish some new practices. We find out from history that actually some of the practices that are rich in the, in the Jewish faith emerged in this period of exile in trial. Home-based worship became the norm. On a Friday night, it would be a meal with some friends or some family, the Shabbat meal, where you'd celebrate the presence and the goodness of God, looking back with thanksgiving and looking forward with hope. That became a routine that was based in the home. What do we see here? We see a little passage that speaks about, you'll call on me and come and pray to me and I'll listen to you. You'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Call, pray, seek. There's an invitation and it's got your name on it. God's saying, you call, you pray, you seek me, I'll listen, you'll find me and I'll prosper you in this place. John Wimber put it this way, we don't seek God's power, we seek his presence. His power and everything else we need is always found in his presence. Do you know, your name is in God's diary every single day and he longs to meet with you just in ways that are real and authentic where you can pour out your heart to him. You might be thinking, I love the theory, but how do we make it happen? I want to just flag up a great resource. A friend of mine, Andy Smith from Belfast, put this together and it's available at Vineyard Churches. How to spend time with Jesus every day. Just simple, simple things that will help you establish some, some routines that will maintain that vital connection so that you can become rooted yourself in your own friendship with Jesus. In our context, in, in our community, we talk about the big three, that every day we want to read and listen God's word. We want to pray our thoughts and just stay, stay in a place of conversation with God and guard our hearts, just deal with the stuff that surfaces in our lives every day. So they became rooted in this time, they became resilient. What do I mean? Well, that their faith wasn't dependent on external circumstances just going their way. It wasn't dependent on a place. It was dependent on the character and the promise of God. They trusted God in the midst of their pain and trial. And the last thing we see is they became replicable. What do I mean by that? Well, they were uncontained from this point onwards in their story. This 70 year period just did a, a reset on the DNA of the people of God where they were very much used to being centered in one place at one time, it became replicable as a community. They could actually realize that we can survive and thrive and encounter God and be a blessing to the places we're in, in lots of different ways, in lots of different places. So the whole idea of the synagogue, a, a kind of a, a localized gathering of believers emerged in this time in the Jewish people's history. And they recognized that we are called to connect with God and pray on our own in our homes, but together in sort of clusters and groupings. And then we're there to be a blessing to those around us. That emerged in this part of the story. So what's the story? What's your story? Maybe you've experienced grief and loss. Maybe you've experienced financial uncertainty, relational pressures or breakdown. What's the promise? What's the promise to you? God's promise comes even more vivid in the midst of our pain because Things aren't gonna necessarily change massively in our circumstances. Sometimes they do, but they don't always. But God's promise still lands in our hearts in the midst of our pain and our trial, that he's for us, that he sees us, that he's present in our pain. Sometimes we just wanna pray for a 
circumstantial change, but that's not God's way of meeting us. We're blessed to be a blessing even in those trials and we're to let his promises be rich in our hearts and spirit. What was different? Well, these people became rooted, they became resilient and they became replicable. What could be different in our story as we say yes to God? A rootedness and a fruitfulness, a resilience and by God's grace, a replicable way of being church that we seek him and enjoy his presence but be a blessing to those around us. Your pain is not too big to keep you from his presence. And in the midst of pain and pressure and uncertainty and turmoil and questions, the promise of God lands. And where it landed in this story, it changed everything. Let it land in your story and bring hope and change. I'm going to finish by reading again that part in Jeremiah chapter 29. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and give you a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You'll seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Amen. Friends, I'd love us to have the chance to welcome the work of the Spirit in our hearts and in our homes right now. Recognise this is um, part of the Bible that brings a promise, but it's quite a challenge as well. And so can we just take a moment to welcome the work of the Spirit. Come Holy Spirit into our homes. Come close to us and move amongst us in power. Just encourage you as you're in this moment of being present to God. I, I really, the invitation is to acknowledge your story as it is. I feel like there's a moment, a holy moment, where we actually just name the things that are actually happening. For some of you, it's anxiety. For some, it's grief. For some, it's uncertainty. There's economic pressure, whatever it is. But just in the presence of God, just rather than pretending it's not there, just name it and say, God, this is what my story is right now. It's a moment to be real with yourself and real with what's actually happening. But here's the invitation in that moment as well. I just want you to say, God, I choose by faith to receive your promise over me. That your word is for me and not just for someone else. That your plans are for me and not just my neighbour. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you start to breathe hope in the lives of people that have been functioning under despair. Put hope in people's spirits as they say yes and they stand firm on your promises. Let hope rise, God, in the hearts of your children. Hope that's not rooted in stuff changing, but on the unchanging nature and goodness and mercy of God manifest in the midst of our stuff. Just want to pray against every intimidation the enemy's brought. Sometimes in the midst of our trials, the enemy just accuses like he did in that story. And his voice is constant. We just break the power of the accusing voice of the enemy. And we undermine his work by resolving to sing the song of God in the midst of our trial. We pick up our harps. We choose to worship and trust in the midst of our trial. And we say yes to you, Lord. We come in the opposite spirit and we counter the work of the enemy and the accuser. And we connect our hearts again with your loving mercy. Come Lord Jesus, release your presence and your love and your hope and your comfort. Just as you're embracing the work of the Spirit in your hearts and your homes, I wanna just finish by saying there's some of you in this moment and the Spirit of God over the last few months has been stirring you. You found yourself praying more. You've been looking up and looking out in the trial, in the uncertainty, that's what's been taking place. And God has been doing that because there's a call on you to lead and to make a difference. The Spirit of God has been stirring this desire to look up and pray and to look out for neighbors and friends and reach out and extend God's kindness in the midst of your own challenge. That's a sign of the Holy Spirit working in you and through you. And we wanna bless that. Pray for the courage in you to grow, to do the things that God's called you to do. And we just pray for fruitfulness as you seek to be 
the people of God. God's promise for blessing and prosperity was on his people and through his people to the people around them. God wants to extend his family and he wants to do that through us as we say yes to him, as we look up and we look out for those around us. We're blessed, all of us, to be a blessing. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you that your spirit is with us and we just say yes to you, Lord. Help your work in our hearts deepen as we talk with friends and we get some prayer in our community. We ask that you let this message land in our spirits and in the same way it created a change in the DNA for these people, let it create a change in our spiritual DNA as we hold on to your promise in the midst of trial. Amen. If God helped you name your anxiety and grief, if you want prayer that he bring you hope in the midst of despair, you are welcome to contact your small group leader for prayer uh, or Billy Blue uh, and Paula Bauer can also pray with you from today through Friday of this coming week. You can either contact them directly or leave a message at the church office or email church at bognervineyard.org.uk. The link is at the top of the wine press for all of the following meetings today. Zoom after party is happening immediately after this live stream. You are welcome to say hello. I'd love to see you again. The link is also on our website, vineyardchurch.co.uk. Kids after party is at 1.30 p.m. today and open prayer is at 6.30 p.m. tonight. May you be filled with the Spirit this week and may you believe his promises over you and the love he has for you. May you have hope in the midst of your pain. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Out of his infinite glory, may you receive power by his Holy Spirit for your hidden self to grow strong so that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. And then planted in love and built on love, you will with all the saints have strength to grasp the breadth and the length and the height and the depth until knowing the love of Christ, which is beyond all knowledge, you are filled to the utter fullness of God. Glory be to him whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory be to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and we'll see you in a few minutes at the after party.